This video is the second in the series, Show Me the Data. So this is Show Me the Data Part 2. Uh, we're going to talk about random variables and expectation notation. We have learned two new things in previous videos this week. We've learned three new things. First, we learned how to spell random. Oh, no, that is right. <laughs> and we learned about random variables themselves. And we uh, are putting that together with expectations that specifically give us things called means. So in this video, we're going to start by putting these two together. We're going to remind us about um, approximating expectations, and then we'll do some examples in R. I'm trying to keep this video shorter than the last two, which were long, so let's just move. We're going to start with random variables and expectation notation. And specifically, this is going to be about means. So we have introduced very strict mathematical notation for expectations. We have said the mean is defined to be the expectation of the identity function. And in the case of a discrete random variable, that turns out to be a sum of x in the sample space x times the density function for whatever density function we might be looking at. Now what I've done here is replaced the identity function with the value it equals. Remember, id of x is just equal to x. So all I've done is rewritten the identity function as x and put it in there. This is very strict mathematical notation. I actually think the notation is better, but there is a statistical notation that is slightly different. And it starts by assuming you have a random variable that follows some distribution with density little f, whatever little f might be, the same as above. So it could work for Bernoulli's or binomials or uniforms, uh, whatever you might have. The notation for the mean then goes like this, the expected value of the random variable itself. And it just is equal to the same thing. It's just a new notation. Now, at first, this is really frustrating because it doesn't quite make sense to take the expectation of a random variable until you remember that random variables are actually just functions then this is just new notation for the identity function. The way you're to think about this is capital X, the random variable, which is actually a function, takes some value from omega, the space defined of whatever names or labels your uh, process is generating. Think heads if you need. And it outputs the value little x. So as long as you look at the random variable capital X like this, then the notation is basically identical to what we had before because both the identity function or the random variable X uh, evaluate to some value the random variable could take on. So I introduced this in this class not to confuse you all, but to give you a better understanding of what expectations are actually doing mathematically and they are operations on functions. However, most of the world of statistics writes expectations as operations on random variables. It doesn't make sense mathematically until you remember that random variables are actually functions. So this new notation carries over to probabilities just the same. So let's do random variables and expectation notation. This time we're going to focus on probability. So we had mathematical notation that said probability of a set A is actually equal to the expectation of an indicator function defined on that set A. 
And the way people would write that in statistical notation using random variables is they'd say probability that your random variable x is in the set A, hopefully you all see that really that's not much different there, is equal to 1, so the indicator defined on the function on the set A of the random variable x. And now everything else from here follows just the same. Uh, so this isn't terribly different. You might actually even prefer this because most of you didn't like seeing indicator functions or general functions here without an argument. And now this is like providing an argument to the function that expectation is operating on. So that's my short two slides on the new notation that we'll try to use consistently throughout the rest of the semester, the statistical notation, even though I strongly feel the mathematical notation is superior. This next slide is going to be about approximating expectations. And it generally goes like this. There is a data side to the world of statistics, and there is a distribution side. So over here, we have, say, expectations of random variables equal to some value. And on this side, we have a bunch of data. Let's say n observations that came from whatever distribution it is that x follows. The way we should think about this is the mean of the vector x converges to whatever this expectation is. So if you have some random variable x that follows a distribution f with density little f, and your data were generated from this distribution function, then the mean of all of your data approximates, converges to, in the limit, the expectation of the random variable with, that follows that distribution. And now, when you look at it in this light, this notation actually makes a little bit more sense because it's an expectation of a random variable capital X, and if you have a bunch of data, little x's, that values your random variable could take on, then the mean of x approximates that. And this works for probabilities just the same. If you have an indicator function defined on some set A, and you call the indicator function on the random variable x, well then mean of the indicator variable called on your vector x approximates that expectation. So really, the mean is approximating expectations. And whatever goes in the argument here, although it happens with many data points on the data side, it's actually approximating just some number on the distribution side. Like here, this would just be the probability of the set A. So let's dive into R and see if we can make this sort of convergence notation make a little bit more sense. So I'll do an example like this. Suppose x, um, that symbol is tilde, shift the button to the left of 1. And in LaTeX, you can go backslash sim, S-I-M, to get it. Let's suppose we have some data from a binomial with k equal to 10 and p equal to 0 0.5. Now we can generate observations from this distribution using our binome. Uh, let's say we want 101 data points. K is equal to 10, P is equal to 0 0.5. can go N, K, and P. We run all these lines of code and then just simply call the mean of X. And this approximates the expected value of x, we can see notationally how similar this is, which is why statisticians prefer this random variable notation inside expectations, which we've learned from earlier is just k times p. And in this case, this makes a lot of sense. If we have uh, 10 flips 
of a fair coin, and we repeat the process of flipping a fair coin 10 times, many, many times, then we should see a bunch of data that looks like this. And indeed, that's what we get out of R. Most of the time, this is what the expectation of the random variable itself is telling us, most of the time we should see numbers around five. And the way to quantify that around language is by calculating the mean of the data, literally adding up all these data points and dividing by n. And you can see 4.7 is actually very close to 10 times 1 half, indeed 5. Now what I want you all to explore on your own is as you increase the sample size, how good is the uh, mean of the observations approximating the true expectation? I want you to adjust the sample size on your own and figure that out. And I encourage you, change uh, k equal to 1 so you're simulating a Bernoulli random variable. There is actually no Bernoulli, like R Bernoulli function in R because it's essentially just a binomial with k equal to 1. Okay, so let's do another example. Let's do a uniform, A equals to 1 and B equals to 6. So this is essentially just like a fair die, and we could generate observations from a fair die using the function run if. That's what it looks like. It's actually randomly uniform, randomly generate numbers from the uniform distribution. Min equal to A and max equals to B. Whoops. Now this is a continuous uniform distribution, so we should see a bunch of decimal numbers, all of which are between A and B. But the density function for the continuous uniform is essentially just a flat line from A to B. So you can imagine that the mean is just halfway in between A and B. And indeed, this looks like it is halfway in between A and B. In fact, this should approximate the expected value of the uniform random variable from A to B, which is A plus B divided by 2. Now again, change the sample size, change A and B around. Please do explore on your own and include one example from the binomial and one example from the uniform distribution for whatever sample size you choose and whatever parameters A and B or K and P you choose. Please include one example from each distribution in your notes, and I will leave you with a challenge problem. Suppose X is from the gamma distribution with shape equal to A, uh, let's call shape equal to alpha, so it's different from A and B for the uniform, and rate equal to beta. And my hint to you is I'll show you how to generate observations from the gamma distribution. My hint to you is this notation here for how to generate data, but you're going to have to go to a previous video to look up the expectation of the gamma distribution, the mean of the gamma distribution, to figure out the equivalent of this from the uniform distribution, but appropriate for the gamma distribution. So hopefully this is showing you um, closer to what real statisticians do. They are essentially taking data observed from some process in the world around them, and they are using it to estimate expectations, what we know as means.